What's up, travel lovers? Welcome back. This is episode four on my special on hiking the Camino de Santiago, the northern route, or what they're calling the Camino del Norte. This episode is going to cover days 16 through 20, starting off here in Colombres and hopefully making it all the way to Aviles. Will I make it? Well, let's find out. On day 16, I would leave Colombres and arrive to Yanez, covering roughly 23.2 kilometers and approximately 400 meters of elevation. I walked out of town and in a few kilometers I found myself in some forested and rural areas before shortly arriving back at the coast. At Playa de Buelna, I was met with some seriously rugged coastline. No matter how many times I come to the northern coast of Spain, I never get tired of seeing the water. Even in bad weather, there is still a certain charm. The Bay of Biscay adds one more layer to an already diverse environment. The majority of other routes of the Camino de Santiago never come near a coast, which is the main reason I was interested in doing the Camino del Norte. Next, I met up with several other peregrinos for a quick break in the small town of Penedueles. Out of nowhere, some local farmers shared some of their apple harvest to keep our energy levels high. Spanish hospitality in its truest form. Once back on the Camino, I would hike through some more treed areas before meeting up with the coast again, at Playa Vidiago. This was pretty much the halfway point of the day, Two kilometers later, I started to hear a very unusual sound. It didn't quite sound like thunder, but it definitely had a deep eeriness to it. I followed the noise until I saw others looking deep into a hole in the rocks. Later, I found out that this is called the Bufones de Erenias, and that on a stormy day, you can see water spit through the hole. As I continued on my path, I would come to a river that I followed and eventually crossed. I only had five more kilometers until reaching my endpoint right around dusk. The next morning, I packed up and headed out of town early. On day 17, I would leave Yanez and arrive to Ribelasea, covering roughly 31.4 kilometers and approximately 300 meters of elevation. 30 minutes later, I was back into nature, with Yanez now just a memory. The weather was mystical. It wasn't raining, but there was a low fog, with a temperature excellent for hiking. At around 4 kilometers, I came across my first beach, Playa San Martin, and shortly after was Playa Polombina. Later, I would pass a charming church surrounded by water in the small town of Barro. For a few kilometers, I couldn't see the coast as I headed back inland, crossing through agricultural and grazing lands before arriving back at the coast at Playa de San Antolin. One breathtaking view after another. I was starting to get hungry, so when I saw a cidreria or cider house, come up around the halfway point in Naves, I had to stop. Asturias is famous for producing sidra, or cider. Not only is it a delicious alcoholic beverage made from apples, but it also has a special technique to pouring it. Locals pour it from way above their head, as it splashes down from sometimes more than a meter to help the drink aerate. A must try when in the region. This particular restaurant also specialized in chula tones, cooked over an open fire. So there was only one thing I could do. I grabbed my knife and fork and did as the Asturians would do. With my belly now full, I headed back onto the trail, passing by more villages and churches as well as through some more pasture land. One thing to think about when planning your Camino is that you get more hours of daylight in the month closer to summer. I was here in the middle of October and once again arriving just before total darkness.
The following morning, I left at sunrise because I had a long day ahead of me. But with these views, I might start waking up before sunrise every day. On day 18, I would leave Ribadaseya and arrive to Villa Viciosa, covering roughly 37 kilometers and approximately 650 meters of elevation. As I left, I was sure to take one more glance at the magnificent view. I would head away from the coast for a few kilometers, eventually coming to the super quaint Ermita de la Magdalena. A few minutes later, I would meet back up with the sea at Playa de Vega and continue to hike along the coast, reaching yet another beach, exchanging one amazing view for another, grazing with my eyes across pastures perched on seaside cliffs, eventually arriving to Playa Berrijón, where I would head inland once again. Six kilometers later, I entered the small town of Colunga, passing by another church and then heading further into the countryside. Along the way, I would come across many apple trees from which the tasty Asturian cedra is made from. I would walk the next couple hours in some really stunning scenery before arriving to the end point of the day. I just made it to Villa Viciosa, which means day 18 is complete. This was the longest hike I've ever done in my entire life, 37 kilometers. And I wanted to take this moment to tell you something that I've been thinking about for really the past 18 days, which now means we're at the halfway point. And that is, you should do the Camino that you want to. There are no rules. You can choose to go off the Camino or to take the bus one day or to do it however you want. If you want to stop and have nice lunches or if you just want to eat at a grocery store, do it the way you want to. Well, my dogs are super tired. I'll see you in the morning. On day 19, I would leave Via Viciosa and arrive to Gijón, covering roughly 29.8 kilometers and approximately 800 meters of elevation. Today's hike is considered to be one of the hardest stages of the Camino. So I left behind colorful Villa Viciosa, and in a few kilometers, I came to the village of Casquita. Here I would have to make a decision. Head to Oviedo and join the Camino Primitivo, or keep on the Camino del Norte. The idea of not seeing the coast again was enough to keep me on the path I had started. For the next several hours, I would be reminded of why they call this part of Spain, Green Spain. I was surrounded, whether I was in densely covered valleys or climbing among the many mountains and hills, green was everywhere. From the tops of the mountains I could see for miles, making me feel small and the world seeming massive. A sentiment that never gets old for me. In no time, I arrived to Asturias' main port and largest city. At the perfect time, I might add, the colors of sunset were dancing all around. The next morning, I could see the real beauty of Gijón. I just wished I had more time to explore this awesome city. Guess I'll have to come back. On day 20, I would leave Gijón and arrive to Avies, covering roughly 25 kilometers and approximately 250 meters of elevation. I left the big city and the coast behind me as I headed back into the interior of the country. Today's route was much easier than the previous days, so I just enjoyed my time as I trekked from one small town to the next. I would climb a few small hills and enter some forested areas every now and then. I met a fellow peregrino around the halfway point and we hiked together until the end point. In no time, we made it to Aviles. I just made it to Aviles, which means day 20 is complete. And unfortunately, this is the end of episode four on my special on the Camino del Norte. If you have any questions about day 16 through 20, put them in the comment box below. I would be psyched to answer any and all of them and help you plan your Camino. If you like this video, go ahead, please give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it greatly. And until next time, safe travels.
Don't leave yet. There's tons of great videos to keep watching. More importantly, did you subscribe yet?